Good, then good morning everyone. Sorry for the little, the little delay. And welcome to the today's academic track uh, where we have prepared four sessions, four main sessions for you. Uh, we will be covering uh, various aspects of the science and blockchain. Uh, we have prepared very cool and interesting talks for you, as you can see on the agenda on the website. We will also have a poster session, so the post has to be set up in the first break between the first and the second session, so please bear with us. And as the opening keynote, I'm um, going to present uh, Ramesh Ramadas, who is the president of IDP Blockchain, who will provide a short keynote and also provide an overview of what this IDP Blockchain is doing. So Ramesh, please, let's just go. Thank you. Please hear me. Do you hear me now? Oh, yeah, it's better. He said, sorry for the delay. Thank you for the delay. I see some more people here. Than <laughs> I was like, it was raining. I was running. <laughs> and that's fine. So uh, thanks for coming again. Um, actually, I'm very impressed with what these guys are doing here. It's a uh, student club. 40, I believe, are active. Active 40, I think, is bigger, right? And you know, they really impressed uh, a lot of people, not just me. What they've done, the way they organize and uh, you know, tracks, and yeah, it's really very uh, impressive program here. By the way, are we recording my talk? Uh, no, I don't think so. That's better. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I, can <do> <laughs> I can be more. Uh, I can use more like you know, simple languages. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have two different modes. <laughs> so if you get recorded, you know, it could be on YouTube and you can't say certain things, right? <laughs> uh, especially you're representing some organization. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really impressed with what these guys are doing, right? One of the things I kept laughing is like, uh, they didn't hire security. <laughs> <laughs> they found two guys, the tallest guy and the <laughs> biggest guy, and they are the security. And they said, you're saving uh, thousands of euros, for, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was laughing at this, like, wow, this is a very creative, I never heard this before. <laughs> so anyway, these guys, you see the way they think, and you know, they're very passionate, and it's very, it's very uh, fun to be around because I I used to be in academia five years but then I spent 15 years in Silicon Valley. Uh, last month I moved to Oxford working with one project mining AI and blockchain at Oxford. But if you want to know more we can talk separately. But today let me uh, how many have you heard of IEEE? I okay half of you but still I'll tell you what it is, don't worry. So it's, it's been a long history. Do you know who this guy is? An old guy? No? Edison. Thomas Alva Edison. So it was actually started by uh, Edison. Uh, how about this guy? Do you guys know Bell? Telephone guy, right? So basically, so the, the generator guy, you know, uh, telephone guy, basically his community. They were all like representing the power generation community, telephone, telegraph, telephone community. They all came together, created this um, Okay, and then, and then uh, down the road, you know, even not just today, even back then, there were different communities, right? The gathered. And they, they actually, there was one, oh, sorry, I'm going uh, backward. And there was another community working on radio. You know, there's Marconi, all these guys doing radio stuff, right? So all these communities, <coughs> uh, these communities, this community, and that became my community. So you can see, communities, it's been like coral, I can see, for a long time, since the beginning. And uh, yeah, they gave IEEE, and uh, it's been a long time, right? Since 1884, the history. Now it's the world's largest professional organization. It's a nonprofit. Uh, I've been a member for 24 years, actually involved. Because I, I became a member when I got my first paycheck, uh, you know, as a student in the US. Uh, so then I've been a member since then, and I've been actively in chair and all kinds of roles for about 23 years. So you can see it's pretty large, 460,000 members in 160, 190 countries. Uh, Germany, this is very active. I think Germany is like the second largest, uh, they call it sections. I'll show you on the next slide. So they basically, in Germany, that 5,000, maybe 6,000 members in Germany. So, so engineering, right? So it's very active in Germany. But uh, it's open. Anybody can be part of it. It's a community, right? And. Uh, there are sections, you know, I typically host 2,000 conferences a year on different topics, there's a lot. Just to give you an idea, they have a billion dollars in reserve, I typically, 
just from conferences, but it's really to advance technology for the benefit of man if you look at the tagline of IEEE. Uh, so there is over uh, 200 journals, IEEE journals. Thank you. Now the photos will be better. Thank you. Now we should take photos. <laughs> so uh, over 200 journal articles, I mean, sorry, journals, IEEE transactions, right? Have you heard of any IEEE transactions in your life? IEEE computer and all, all kinds of 200, right? In fact, uh, out of the top 10 engineering journals in the world, seven out of 10 are IEEE journals. Again, this is like, we have, you know, four or seven numbers, right? But then there's over probably, my guess, 10% of them are volunteers driving these conferences. It's not, they only have 1,000 staff, roughly. 1,000 staff. But they do 2,000 conferences. How? Volunteers. Okay. So primarily, 90% community effort, 10% staff is my, my opinion. So there's over a lot, lots of articles, 6 million articles on IEEE Explorer. There's a, there's a database that they post. And then uh, standards, OK. How many of you knew that Wi-Fi is an IEEE standard? Only three of you knew about this, right? Wi-Fi is an IEEE standard, it's IEEE 802.11, and nobody knows about it. Nobody, we don't call it that way, we call it Wi-Fi, so most people don't know. Uh, same with Ethernet, Ethernet is an IEEE standard, 802.3, um, Bluetooth. So there are many standards that we use in daily life, they're not IEEE, we don't know because it just, you know, they have easier names, right? Who's gonna say, I'm using IEEE, give me the password for IEEE, IEEE 802.11, doesn't sound good, right? So yeah, we just have acronyms for all these things, so people don't know, but this is not a standard. So industry, if I summarize, people in the academia, they know about IEEE for the conferences, because this is where students have to get their papers published to get, you know, get your PhD or whatever, and change the journals too. So conferences and journals, academia know about it, IEEE stuff. Industry knows about IEEE because of standards. They have to comply with the standards to make products. Have you guys seen the Wi-Fi logo on some of those products? Wi-Fi, so that's basically a you know, certification to make sure the product is compliant with that. Now, uh, this is just, you can ignore this, but I, what I wanted to show you was like, there are uh, many, you can think of it as societies within IEEE organization, you know, it's like communities within communities, okay? You know, they all focus on different topics, you know, each society has to, you know, they have their own, in a conference, journal, so it's really big, right? There's over like, you know, 49 societies, there's like eight councils, there's like, you know, some community groups, 15 technical communities, some, I'm one of the co-founders of this, uh, and this was started back in 2018, uh, actually in 17, but 18, then it became a technical community in 2023, and we are, we work with other societies within, within IEEE. Okay. And also we work with outside IEEE as well, like John Watching Club, Oxford, Princeton, uh, you know, like the Sharm, Rota Valley Conference, we're partnering with them. Uh, I'll, on the list, I'll show it to you. So just a summary, <coughs> basically the IEEE blockchain technical community is part of IEEE technical <coughs> activities. It's part of IEEE. And that's the website. So you can, you know, you can take a look at the website. It's easy. It's blockchain and I to be at ORG. And uh, you know, everybody is welcome to join. Can you, you know, we have everything there for you. You know, uh, I guess we should put Discord there, but you know, we have one, but it's not listed though. We do have Slack and Discord, but it's not linked really there. But really, just no, no, that's the key word. It's a collaboration hub. Anybody can come and. Uh, you know, like you find researchers to work on standards, papers, startups, whatever you want to do. There's no, you know, we don't define what you can do. It's like we just, it's a platform. And I've been setting up local groups since 2018. There's over 80 groups all over the world. And you can see I've traveled quite a bit. I've been to 72 countries. And uh, of course, the Munich one was set up in collaboration with uh, students right here. The Munich one is new. 
And last year, we organized about 10 events all over the world. We meet in the community, right? The groups we have all over the world. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes I go speak, sometimes I don't, but they organize the events. Uh, like this year, all the new ones that we completed, there's almost 20, some 23 years of events happening all over the world. Again, uh, one of the top two, we are directly financially doing it. Other ones are like, you know, others are doing it, but we are collaborating with them. It's a hub, right? We try to connect with all the you know, relevant uh, folks here. So this is like, I to be, these are like, uh, as I said, like, you know, you can see Tun is uh, here, right? This conference is here. But you can see the whole list here. Uh, Oxford, Princeton, <laughs> Crypto Valley Conference, all kinds of events. And these are events organized by the local groups I showed you before. Uh, yeah, it's very active. It's a very active community. We have over 26 standards published so far. There's more under uh, development. You can take a look. Look, all of these things I'm showing you, if you just go to this website, if you click on the tab, you, you see, you'll see all the groups. You'll see all the events. You just have to click. And you'll find all the stuff that I'm talking about here. Uh, so the events are there. And then uh, we have some interesting content. For some time, for a long time, we didn't have any new content. This is all like old stuff we had from. 19 stuff, but I convinced Imran, I don't know how many of you use this book, I think they use this book, Mastering Blockchain, Fourth Edition, it's a decent, it's a good book, I mean, it's, uh, so I'm convinced, he works at JP Morgan Chase in London, um, you know, he works in the blockchain department, he's the vice president, but, so I convinced him to create a course for us, so it's going to be up on our website before the end of the year, that's going to be Introduction to Blockchain, right? it's based on his book, uh, but we'll make it open. And then there's going to be more, like blockchain and energy, Ethereum fundamentals, all the stuff will be coming up. Uh, we'll be posting on our website soon. That's the educational content. Right? Also, the this is the thing that uh, is probably relevant to you guys, right? So I actually was here back in, uh, I think May. I got on their telegram, to, I just searched, and then I, I said, hey, I'm, I'm here for one week. I want to meet somebody from this Tomb Blockchain group. A couple of people responded, I met, and we brainstormed and said, okay, let's do an academic session at this conference. And that's why we have this academic session, and uh, it's going quite well. Uh, how many present presentations that we have so far? 14 presentations. How many? 14. 14 presentations, yesterday and today. Right. Right. Today, right. Today. Right. Today. Right. Uh, so in all those uh, presentations, they're going to write papers. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Let's say 50 percent, seven. Okay. So then we can actually post it on our website. We have a technical uh, briefs publication, right? It's like a magazine that we publish. You know, we've been publishing for a while since 18. And we have a team and all this, but uh, yeah, we will basically publish those. Like a special issue kind of thing will be on our website. Uh, and you can still read about it. I mean, it's basically the guidelines and the link. You, know, you can read. We try to keep it as simple as possible, right? Like, you know, Okay, uh, I think uh, one more thing is uh, we're working on starting a new IEEE transactions on blockchain. It's probably going to take about a year. Um, and no, next year we will do the call for it. It has to go through the IEEE process. You know, it takes time. It will take a year. We, I just submitted the letter of intent two months ago, and so far we got everything that's working. Path is clear, so it will happen in a year. So once the IEEE transaction on blockchain is uh, up and running, all of you will expect you to write papers there to get your PhD. <laughs> uh, so, well, one last thing is, uh, yeah, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. That's my wisdom. Uh, please do. Otherwise, I won't let you get outside of the room. <laughs> but I'll stop you. Any questions, comments? Oh, then connect me and ping me if you guys are always, you know, you can you ping me and if you want to get involved in any of these groups here, I can connect you as well. If you're not from here, different groups, you know, I can connect you and you can be involved with it. Okay. Oh, there's one question. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for the talk. Um, so in the last like three or four years, um, if you go to these like websites like Call for Papers and so on and yeah. search for like blockchain keyword, you see like a lot of 
conferences, which is like maybe like one year old, two years old, and like the quality of them is like, it, you can't be really sure that it's like a good venue. And then when you see like a name like IEEE in front of it, like IEEE blockchain or some other like uh, similar conferences, yeah. Yeah, you think, okay, like they will have better program committees, or at least I should believe is like overseeing this. But I mean, the quality is not, again, always like great. Um, so do you expect like these, like, w will there be like a uh, threat wise um, increase in the number of conferences in the upcoming years, or we will have less conferences, but the quality will become better? It's better program companies and so on. So will the yeah, reputation so increase or will we just see more conferences popping up? But well, uh, you're talking about academic academic conferences, right? So the way the academic conferences work, of course, I took we have like several academic conferences. Like, uh, see, these are all like uh, academic, I took, you know, these are all like six, uh, six, six, so you can see number, right? They're all like uh, in blockchain. So the way, of course, we all want more conferences in this area, right? We all want to be this field to grow, uh, research to you know continue. The thing is, uh, so each conference is <coughs> run by like volunteers, okay? And usually they get papers from their connections, their network, right? You know, you might you know, send it out to people I know, and then when they get let's say 100 papers, you know, the committee would decide: do we accept 50% of it, or 40% of it, or 10% of it, right? So this is the factor that could really play a big role in the quality. Because you know, if you accept 70% of it, let's say you accept 100% of it, then you know, uh, again, it depends. If it's, if it's like I to print tech briefs, it's fine. If it's a peer-reviewed journal, where you want to do research based on that, of course you want it to be high quality because you're betting your life on this, or PhD on this, right? So there's always going to be a whole range of things. We just have to pick, yeah. It's, it's a factor, acceptance factor, they call it, right? Acceptance rate. It will make impact the quality of output. <laughs> and there's no room. You know, this committee, a committee for this will have a different room than this, a committee for this. And they just reached consensus. Like, for example, here, this committee, I didn't tell them what percent they use, they will decide. We will let them decide what is the acceptance rate they want to use. But we still want to help them, right? So, yeah. Stop here. We can talk more on the offline. I can tell you more things, but I can't tell here. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you.